you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer the question yourself before listening on. In order to solve this question, we need to begin with a basic background concept about the electric field produced by positive charges. So let's go ahead and just draw a positive charge. And it turns out that electric fields that are produced by positive charges point away from the positive charge. So we can imagine that the positive charge is producing these electric field lines that are emanating away from the positive charge. And that's a very important concept when it comes to answering this question. For example, if we look over here at point P and also examine this charge right here, we would see that because this charge is positive, it will be producing electric field lines that are pointing away from that positive charge. Well, over here at point P, away from that positive charge would be pointing exactly to the right in the positive x direction. So let's go ahead and draw an electric field line that's pointing to the right. And perhaps we can arbitrarily label this electric field line E1. And so that's the electric field produced by this positive charge. But of course there's another positive charge. And over here at point P we would expect the electric field line to once again be pointing away from that positive charge. So if we go over to point P and draw a line that's pointing away from the positive charge, it would be pointing in this direction. So we're going to go ahead and draw a single electric field line produced for the electric field produced by the, this positive charge. And perhaps we can label that electric field line E2. Now this question is asking for symbolic expressions for the components of the electric field. But before we can do that, we have to understand the equation for the electric field that is produced by these so-called point charges. And that equation is as follows. We have the electric field equaling a constant multiplied by the magnitude of the charge divided by the distance squared. The distance would be the distance from the charge to point P in this problem. So for example, for E1, if we were to use the equation that we had just written down, we would set that equal to a constant multiplied by the absolute value of this charge, which was the charge producing the electric field marked E1, divided by the distance from that charge to point P squared. Now that distance has been marked D, so we can just write D squared. We will write down a similar setup for the electric field marked E2, and that's going to equal K times the absolute value of this charge divided by the distance from that charge to point P squared. Now that distance is not marked on the diagram. We don't know what that is yet. And so our challenge becomes finding that distance. And to do that, we have to actually understand a little bit of the geometry of this particular trapezoid. Now, the trapezoid has 45 degree base angles, and what that means is that the two legs of the trapezoid are actually equal in length. So what we could do is actually drop a line straight down on this side and then also on this side. Now we know that the distance between those lines is D. That was marked in the figure. We also know that the entire length of this large base is 2D. That was also marked in the figure. Now if we subtract the length of the base which is 2D, by D, we would be left with D. Certainly 2D minus 1D is equal to D. That means that the total length of this segment and this segment has to be D. And if we wanted to find the length of just one of those segments, we could divide the D by 2. So, in short, this length right here is D over 2. Now let's remember our goal was to actually find this length right here. We can see that we've built up a small right triangle here. And we have the adjacent side labeled as D over 2, adjacent to this 45 degree angle. So since we're looking for the hypotenuse, we would want a trig function that relates the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. And of course that would be the cosine. So we could say that the cosine of that 45 degree angle is equal to the adjacent side, which is D over 2, divided by the hypotenuse. Now we could do a little trick here. If we put the cosine over 1, we could actually flip both sides of the equation as follows. We could then multiply both sides of this equation by the d over 2 and that way on the right side the d over 2's will cancel leaving us with the hypotenuse. 
Now, the cosine of 45 is radical 2 over 2, so we can replace that. And then 1 over radical 2 over 2 is actually 2 over radical 2. We can bring that 2 up to the numerator. And then if we multiply d over 2 by 2 over root 2, we just multiply the numerator. So we multiply the d by 2 and the 2 by root 2. And then, in fact, these 2's cancel. So we finally arrived at the length of this segment right here, which is d over root 2. That's the distance from point P to the charge, which we were about to plug into the electric field equation. So let's go ahead and plug in the d over root 2. And then we could go ahead and square it. We'll square the numerator to make d squared, and then root 2 squared is just 2. And this 2 right here can actually move up to the numerator. Now, the challenge about the E2 electric field is that it's pointing off here at an angle. Remember, E1 was pointing exclusively in the x direction. E2 has both an x component and a y component, so let's draw those components. Now, because this angle is 45 degrees, this angle right here also will be 45 degrees because we have two parallel lines that are cut by this transversal, making the corresponding angles congruent. The x component is adjacent to that 45 degree angle, so it's going to end up being E2 times the cosine of 45. Also, because it's pointing to the left, we have to make sure we put a negative sign on it. The y component is opposite to the 45 degree angle, so that's going to be E2 times the sine of 45. And that y component is pointing straight up, so it will remain positive. What we'll do is actually arrange the electric fields in terms of their x and y components. Remember, E1 only was pointing in the x direction, so its y component is 0. For E2, the x component has a negative sign on it, and it's multiplied by the cosine of 45. And then for the y component of E2, we have the E2 times sine. Now, both the cosine and the sine of 45 are root 2 over 2. And we can see that the 2 in the numerator will cancel with the 2 in the denominator for both the x and the y components. Now, to get the total value for the components, we have to add the 2x components together as well as the 2y components. If we add the 2y components, we have 0 plus this expression here. So that's just going to end up being the root 2 times k times capital Q over d squared. Notice we can drop the absolute value symbol because the q charge was positive and it isn't necessary to have the absolute value sign for a positive value. So that would be the answer for the y component. The x component's a little bit trickier. We have to add the first x component to the second one. And actually, since we're adding to a negative quantity, we can basically just subtract them. We can actually factor out a kq over d squared since both of these terms contain the kq over d squared. And what we would be left with is one minus the square root of two. So this could be the final symbolic expression for the total x component, and then over here we have the total y component. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up icon and subscribe so you can stay tuned for additional videos. Remember, you can send in your own question to this email address, and I will do my best to post the answer to it on YouTube.